Testing, testing, are we up? We're up. Soup, it's been such a long time since we've had soup. I'm just uh, test testing it here. And if you believe that, you'll believe anything. We're gonna have a guest today. He'll be arriving at about 8.30. So for the first half hour, I'll be by myself. And then we've got a guest. I'm trying to get a different camera angle worked out here and I'm testing. This is a GoPro up there hanging on the wall. It's a Hero 3 Plus. And we've got our normal camera focused on the bench here. We'll see how it goes. You've given away the guest here. Yes, Jacques is coming this morning. He's actually leaving Japan tonight. He's flying back to Holland. And I haven't been able to spend too much time with him this time. We usually hang out quite a bit and look at prints and stuff. But this time, no, he's, uh, he's coming, he's gone. He's been traveling all over Japan. The inset window isn't wonky. I've tried to set it this way because Jacques is going to be here. Maybe he's going to be standing here. I've, tr I've tried to set it up this way so we can see both of us without disturbing the work. So I've, I've wonked it. This is not a mistake. This is uh, intentional. The guest today is Sensei Martian. I don't think so. <laughs> Somebody's going to have to change this. Okay, let's get busy. We're not cooking this morning. I mean, we're not cooking any, uh, any size because I'm using what was left over yesterday. Afke-san was here. Uh, when did she do hers? Yesterday or the day before? So we are using leftover. And actually, I don't really know how much we have here, if there's going to be enough. It would not have been a bad idea if I had cooked up some more. I think it's going to be a little bit, oh, it still hasn't melted. Look at this. What does this remind you of? Okay, we're going to have to wait four or five minutes until that melts. The, the, uh, the desk, I mean, the, the container here is hot, hot, hot that didn't melt because it was quite a lump so we're going to have to say a couple of minutes here i know what we can do we are forced now to wait three or four or five minutes for that i've got a show and tell prepared whether we have time for show and tell with Jacques and with the dosa and the hanging or anything up. So let's do this. Let's take a little bit of our show and tell, bring it forward here to kill time while I'm waiting for that thing. One sec. This is totally a question of we interrupt our regular programming. I say this is part of our show and tell, but probably it isn't. This is auction stuff that came up a couple of weeks ago, and Watanabe-san and I were looking at it. And a lot of times people describe stuff as woodblock prints that actually aren't woodblock prints. And sometimes we can see it clearly, ha 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 ha, past the next one. Sometimes we look at it, and she looks at me, and I look at her, and we're like, what do you think? And we really can't tell. This one is one such book, and I'm going to flip a coin, not flip a coin, I'm going to make my guess here, this is probably not actual woodblock prints. But even if it isn't, it's still an interesting item. Let's have a peek at it while we're waiting both for our size to warm up and we're waiting for Jacques to arrive. So mini, mini show and tell to kill time here just for a moment. This is absolutely not socks blowing off stuff, just relax. It's an interesting little item. It's an insight into Japanese culture from the period. 
Is it going to be, oh my God, a lifetime find? Not at all. Some of you may have seen it. There's a bunch of you out there on these on these on this chat who are following Yahoo auctions all the time. And there might be somebody up out there right now who will know what this is. He will have seen it and said, I don't think I'm gonna bid on that because I don't think it's a woodblock print. It's all melted now, but it's not quite hot enough. The coolness of that lump that we put in there has brought the temperature down. So we still need to wait a couple of minutes, but it has now melted. We have no major unwrapping. It looks like just two, two levels today. Tokaido Goju Sansuki, the 53 stations of the Tokaido, in a nice little album. And my bet is this is not woodblock, but let's have a look and see. It's too flat, it's too neat, it's too clean. Is severely underpackaged. The the outside cardboard wrapping was nice, you know, it was good and strong. Look at this, a nice little presentation. Oh, look at this, look at this. We have Uchida Arts. Uchida is an interesting company. They're they're still around actually. There's a fragment of them still left in, in Kyoto. They're a long time Kyoto company. They published many, many, many staggeringly interesting woodblock prints, art albums in the first part of the 20th century, print reproductions, original prints. Now and then you see a picture on the internet of their block warehouse, and it looks like the Raiders of the Lost Ark, and I'm not exaggerating. It's insane, their block warehouse. This is Uchida Han Hansha, Uchida Shupansha. No, u u it's not Uchida. Wait, 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 Dave, look at this right side round. Naikai Shupansha. It's not Uchida. I got confused because of the first character is the same. My apologies. Excuse me. I jumped to conclusions when I saw the Uchi character there. It's not. It's not Uchida. Sorry about that. It's Naikai Shupansha. I haven't seen these before. Let's have a look inside. Jump to conclusions on a minimum of evidence. Where are we? Which way around? It's going to open this way. Map of the Tokaido. Insatsu. They're not woodblock prints. It's printed matter. It's offset printing. Let's kill that camera for a minute, just a sec. Let's kill that. English description and Japanese description. It was aimed at a double audience. Is there a date back on that little flap we saw, just a sec? Is there a date? There is. Sorry about that. We should have looked at this before. without my glasses. Showa 12, the 15th day of the seventh month. Showa 12. Have we got a bot that tells us what that is? 1937. So here we are. There were still tourists in Japan at that time. So this is made to sell to both the domestic market 
and to the tourist market. And I don't exactly know what technique they've used to do this. I can see there are half tones here. There are also spot colors. So it's done with some mix of, of single flat color and of half tone. So it's not four color printing, the kind of stuff we do these days, CMYK. They seem to have used a reasonably good copy as their master. I don't see replication of, well here's a little bit of misregistration. So they might have used a slightly wonky copy or maybe their own blue is misregistered. I can't tell at this point. <laughs> Look at the comment here. Can you read it? Is it, is it? Can I get it big enough for you to read it? The surrounding landscape is so picturesque that it is always compared with Geneva of Switzerland. I actually hadn't heard that comparison before, but uh, there you go. So there it is. We might keep this for the collection just for fun, just to show the kind of thing that was available back in the era. Or maybe we'll just uh, sell this off, put it in the shop and sell it on for what it cost us. If it had been a woodblock album, it would have been a very nice little treasure. But it's not, so too bad. Okay, here we go. I think now our size will have been warmed up and we're ready to actually start work. We didn't pay much for it because we were in strong doubt about whether it was woodblock or not. We didn't pay too much for this. I don't remember the exact figure. Maybe 5,000, 6,000 yen. I don't remember. Anyway, put aside for now. Let's get some work done. brush is hard. It was washed after the last sizing session, but we don't try and wash out all the glue at all. We've talked about this many times. For me to wash out all the glue, just spend so much time rubbing and washing and rubbing and washing, to me that's doing more damage to the brush than normal wear and tear. So after each session, it goes in hot water for a few minutes while I do the hanging up. Then it gets rinsed and rinsed and rinsed till the water running off it is cold. So we've got most of the glue out of it. We then shake it off, hang it up in the bathroom, the shower stall, it drips onto the floor and dries out. So after we come back to use it the next time, all of our brushes are like that. They are, they are hard. And once we dip them in, it softens up straight away. Other in fact, uh, other companies may do it a different way. There are printers in town, Numabe for one, Kubota-san also. He washes all his brushes endlessly until it runs clear and it runs soft. He hangs them up and once they're dry, it's completely soft again. That's a common way to do it. I myself feel that that's too much wear and tear on the brushes. Your mileage will vary. Okay, okay, okay. So I'm saying, does brushes have a long life cycle? A brush like this one, I'll be, we'll be using this way past the end of my life. I know the, the workshop will be still using it. We find that the printing brushes, of course, because we have to soften them up, they get shorter and shorter and shorter. They are definitely consumable items. They wear out and go away. This brush gets such a little wear and tear, in my experience anyway. We've, we've had them for, for decades here, and they're still looking fine. They are expensive, and our biggest problem is not the cost. Our biggest problem is that right now you can't buy brushes like this for love or money. There's nobody making them anymore. There are still mizubake, the water brushes. People are still making stuff like this. 
you can buy this sort of brush still. Not very high quality, but you can still buy them. So what we're doing, and what we've been doing, to make up the larger brushes we need, you've seen this before, we've cut and glued together. This is made out of two brushes and the handle from a third one. So we've cannibalized smaller brushes. In fact, this is the same one. These are from Kaneyahake, and this is also from Kaneyahake. So it's the same one. One, two, and a third one. Okay, the paper we're sizing today. I'm going to do it in two batches. I have 25 large sheets this size, the Nishiki paper. Am I on, on the camera here? This is the paper we call Nishiki. Some people call it Masaban. It's enough to make two great waves, or in our case today, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It'll make eight of the prints in our Hokusai subscription series. And because I don't want to stack them up too high for the back side, I'm going to split it in half. It's 816 now. 25 big sheets cut in half gives me 25 here. I'm going to finish this 25 and then come back and do the second 25 separately. And the reason is because doing the top side is easy. But once we flip them over at the back side, my experience is if the stack becomes too high, they really start to get creased at the end of the brush stroke. So we're just going to do 25 sheets here today. I think that should be just right. Once our guest is here, there'll be conversation. We have another show and tell. Let's get up and running. Will Jock try his hand at sizing? I hadn't considered that. I don't think I'll be asking him to do that. I don't think he'll be expecting this. <laughs> paper also today is very thin. When we order it from Iwano-san, we usually tell them, you know, what we want. We want this batch to be fairly heavy, this batch to be light, thin, whatever. It's all flexible and adjustable. And for this Hokusai series, because we're doing only a few colors, there's very little color overlay, and some of the lines are extremely fine line, we've asked him to make us a thin paper. So the paper we're doing today is what can I say? It's thin. It's a word. Compared to the stuff we use for the Shin Hunger Prints we're making, it's easily half the thinness, maybe even less. And then even one more. Before I send this to Kubota-san, I'm going to press each sheet and make it raise just, just totally flat. Okay, let's get going. Enough talk, Dave. Someone's saying, am I still making videos for YouTube? My God, my God, my God, my God. The ideas now are stacking up. My idea file is as high as my head. It's time. I'm sorry, it's time. And I, I don't know how to get out of this problem now. So many ideas and so little time. It's What's going to have to happen is once the autumn tour season finally, hopefully, finally, starts to slow down, the girls here will just have to lock me in a room or something. Just make a deal with all the employees. Don't talk to Dave. Give him two days. Uh, what's the word? Not blacklist him. I know. Shun. They should just shun me for two days. Turn off the phone. Take away my computer. And give me two days. Dave, come up with a YouTube video. But I think that's really the only way that's going to happen. Take away my food or something. I don't know. Lock me in the room. brush still has to soften up. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, my computer, whatever, turn off the email or something, I don't know, I'm just blah, 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 blah. Actually, I don't need the computer to do the important part of it. I can get the script and stuff prepared, I could use a pencil and paper to do that. The camera is what it is. I could do the thing without a computer, then come back to the computer to do the editing. Because once that was done, we're okay. There's no answer. I'm sorry. You know. 
Hide Dave in a hotel? Yeah, it, that's again, that's not a bad idea. Just shut me away somewhere, away from this place. If it's going to be a video about this group of prints or something, take the prints with me, put me in a room, the camera, the lights. Okay, here we go. The next video could be the beginnings part three, it could be the next David's choice, or it could be the Hokusai Reborn series part three, or it could be the year-end update video. That has to go in December. There's four videos demanding my attention right now. Ooh, a bit too much. This is thin paper. That's a bit too much liquid. What about the paper making experience video? It's in the can waiting for editing. Yes, it's there. The reason that wasn't such a quick, fast, bang, bang job is the subtitles. Everything we spoke was in Japanese and that needs to be uh, edited into English and subtitled. Start delegating, yeah. I hear footsteps. It's either early staff or a guest. How you doing, sir? I think you're live. Yeah, coming up out of the stairs. Yes, you're live already. How you doing, sir? I'm fine. How are you? Okay. I already saw you were on the first floor on Third the Twitch stream from my hotel room. So. Oh, so, okay. Here's the, just so you know, here's the camera setup. You're here. We're, that camera up there okay. is this one. Hi, guys. And the other camera. So when I'm standing here doing this, you're behind me. So if, you, if yeah. you want to talk to people, step back just a little bit there. Okay. Look up to the camera, you know, rather than, you know what I mean? I'm blocking where you are. Yeah. So if you want to say things to people, you'll need to step a little bit back. Yeah. Okay. And then step forward. Jacques Commandeur. Commandeur? Pronunciation, I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> From the Netherlands. <laughs> Some people call me Commander and then stand like this. Yeah. <laughs> and I'd say, <laughs> I've known Jacques for 15, I don't even know, 15, getting on, 20, 20, 20 years, years to show 20. Yeah. I'm going to have to come in here. So. Yeah, sure. And Jacques started by buying some of my prints. So step one, he was a customer, whatever, buying prints. Excellent. Step two, Absolutely. an acquaintance. Then whatever, there's a customer, acquaintance, friend, I don't know what, what the, the level of... Uh, there's, there's no end to this. <laughs> <laughs> One reason I asked Jock to come over today, we've talked about it before, is that Jock is actually uh, very much into the Japanese multi-block print scene. He has a massive, major, very interesting collection, kind of a unique collection of Japanese, certain type of Japanese prints, because uh, there's different focuses and different areas in the world of Japanese prints, and Jock has grabbed one, I wouldn't call it a niche, Maybe a niche, one specific type of print, and he's tried to gather and research and learn about what they are. And we're talking about the Meiji era prints. And you're the one who pointed whatever, me whatever, in that whatever. Direction. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay. I, I know some things. I, we do this all the time on the stream. I talk about stuff that it should be done, should be done, yeah. but I don't do it. I sort of maybe uh, maybe somebody I, else can do this. I, I, I just <laughs> grabbed one of your IDs. That's all. <laughs> Somebody else can do. I, somebody else talked here. I'm no good at delegating. We're talking about the YouTube videos. I'm no good at delegating, but I'm really easy at saying that's interesting. Maybe you could do this. <laughs> We're talking about the prints published by two men. I'm sort of semi-convinced there's actually one guy, but it's two men, of oh, course. Oh, really? No, no, ah. no. I'm, everything okay. looks so much the same. Akiyama Buemon and Matsuki Heikichi. <laughs> so, no, and it all started with one print I bought from Chris Ullenbeck in Leiden, where I live. Uh, and uh, you s I put it up on my website. It was a print by Ikeda Teru, Teru, Terukata, Terukata from his Edo no Nishiki uh, 
folding album, mm -hmm. and that's when you you told me, well, there are lots there of are other similar like ones. That okay, from, okay, from okay. Those two publishers. We should pause just for a sec, just so we can talking about the stuff without showing is crazy. So I brought my album, Chuck, <laughs> just so we can show the type of what we're talking you about here. Me, don't you? Pardon me? I'm not telling. Yeah, no, see, you do believe yeah, yeah, believe it, but what, they don't know what we're talking about. So what I meant was, if we can grab one example of this type of print. Here, how about, how about this one? Is that okay? Yeah, sure. The type of print we're talking about, and the type of print that Jacques has specialized in collecting for the last 20 years, it's a group of prints that were published in the Meiji era in two forms. As single sheets like this. Don't drop them in the soup. <laughs> That's for someone's soup. Soup. <laughs> The prints were published almost always in sets of 12. They were published in two formats, as single sheets like this, and also bound into an album. Yeah. Not folded backwards like other Japanese books, but folded forwards. And so they, that they all have the and yes, serious title. In, in, in the margin, right margin, yes. this, in this cartouche. So, 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 but unlike Edo era prints, which all had the cartouche inside the image, right. these guys, for some reason, somebody one day pop started it and did this, put the cartouche outside at the top right, one centimeter down from the top in a pastel color, and the other publisher followed exactly the same pattern, and for a period of, we're talking 10, yeah, 15 years. Something like that. Yeah, the earliest one to the latest one yeah. is somewhere around 15 years apart. Yeah. So, yeah. And they published drop-dead sets, and they're nearly always involving women, beautiful women, scenes of daily life. We're not talking Yoshiwara here. We're talking normal, normal people, but not normal, because it was all very, very, very high class, very expensive, very... Uh, it was very much a case of... Uh, how the other half lived. The people that bought these prints must have been getting a window into the life of the upper class people. And there's the two publishers who went back and forth and back and forth. I guess they were competing with each other. I don't know. I or don't they know. knew each other. Or I, 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 mm. I still hope to find out mm. about uh, the connection between those two. But people like us who don't have access to all the Japanese diaries and letters and books well, and stuff, I don't the, know how uh, we're going to... The newspapers, the Shimbun... Uh, I hope to find something there. Okay, so this is still an active thing for you then, not just collecting the prints, yeah. but trying to learn more background information. Yeah, well, as you know, I'm writing a book on a book on these folding albums. Okay, but now that you're retired, then this is moving forward to show. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do we have a name for this genre? You know, we've been trying to explain I, it to these I people called, and show it. Yeah, but I call them orihon, you know, the... Yeah, yeah, of course. Like but origami, but now orihon okay. instead of origami. Yes, but orihon is a wide genre, the, the yes, albums, that can be anything. Yes, but too, this, too wide, this yeah. particular group well, I, of prints... For, for now, I call them orihon of uh, Akiyama Buemon mm. and Masuki Eikichi. Mm -hmm. One of them, it's uh, Hey Kichi to show his company name, Nani Daikokia, or if I got the other way around, I can't remember which uh, no, is which. No, it's Daikokia, and uh, one from Akiyama is uh, Kokedo. Kokedo, I can never remember yeah. that one, okay. Yeah. People are asking, who are the customers for those books? Well, of course, we don't know, but the... I, I, I for one. <laughs> But uh, I don't <laughs> is the guy. There's, there's <laughs> two know. possible groups of people. The kind of people who saw themselves in these prints, upper class people, these prints could not have been all that cheap. You know, especially the books could not have been all that cheap. Yeah. This is not your cup of noodles worth of wood bought prints. These are much more upscale than that. So the type of rich people depicted in the prints could have been a target, but also, as I mentioned before, other not so much the albums, but the sheets one by one by one, people who were looking up to those people. How should we dress? What should my hair yeah. look like? How does the tea ceremony actually work? Stuff like that. My, my guess, we don't know. And also you, you got three sorts of, of them. So as you just said, uh, some are without a fold, so they were, were uh, issued separately. Single sheets. Single sheets. And then... I guess after a set, they had a set of 12 covering a whole year and the four seasons. Yes, so the album as a they whole without being together. folded, like we saw, we saw that yeah. T-shirt on the album that I had. Yes, right. yes, yes, yes. And then later, of course, you, you have these terrible people who rip those albums apart again 
and then sell them again as single as sheets. Single sheet. So we see single with, sheets folded. With the yes, folded yes, 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 so yes. Those yeah. three things you yeah. can find on the market. I should, I, I should have, I did, I prepared a link. One sec, we're sitting here talking about these books. Let me pop a link in here, Jacques. Yes. For one sec. Oh, somebody, somebody's got it. Okay, bingo, it's already done. Coding Gummy's done. Thank you, Coding Gummy. Jacques has actually two websites. The website we're looking at here is the first one, which we're talking about right now. Yeah. Uh, that's got the link to these Meiji prints that we're talking about. So. Excuse me, sir. So just I was one just one thing I was wondering about. Of course, I watch your streams uh, quite often. Only uh, usually the next day, <laughs> because it's too late. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Yeah. So the mods, the what you call the mods, are they Corin Gammy, John Becker? Mo we've got three three Kevin, mo moderate, Kevin, moderators. moderators. Yes, yes, yeah. Here they're uh, Corin Gammy. Yeah, that's he's, one. Uh, I guess. So he's he, is he not from? He's living in Europe. He's living in Europe. Yeah. Isn't he? Aren't you from the Netherlands too? Corey I Gammy? don't believe so. No? Okay. He may he may speak as much as he wants to here. Uh, Karen, who is in yeah. uh, Austin, Texas, and then John Becker, who's off today. He's shooting a, a, a band or something. Ah. John is a real estate photographer, but he also shoots bands, and I think that's what he's doing tonight. So. Ah, so Tom is not one of the. Mods. Tom's an official mod. I don't know. Right. No. Not last time I looked. So because those are the people I always see. Uh, well, you can see there's a, there's a green sword mark here, and that's that tells you those people are moderators. The green sword. Ah, uh, those ones. That's the, the mark of. The, I am, I'm, I'm told that's the mark of a mod. It means they've got a sword <laughs> off with your head. You can be banned and stuff. So be yeah, careful. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Corey. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Okay. Uh, Tom is not a mod yet. <laughs> <laughs> is, is that a hint? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how okay, the mods anyway. were chosen. We didn't have mods for years and then uh, whatever. This is not the kind of stream that really needs moderation in the sense of every day there's people coming in to say bad things, we've got to shoot them out. It doesn't no, much no, happen no. here. You know. When's no. the last time we had an incident? I don't even remember. They self-select as nice people. Yes, I guess so. Uh -huh. I guess so. Before we started this morning, I, I teased, I said, today we're going to have a guest. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be streaming from the third floor, but when our guest comes in, he's going to come up to the second floor. No. You're European, uh, yeah. you're European, oh. right? Yes. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah. I'm living in Japan. Yeah, we're, yeah. On, we're on the it, third floor, yeah, Japanese it, style, but... So, so, Japanese style, this is Sankai, but the Dutch style, this is Nikkei. Yes, yes. I'm Not just that, European to show. Don't all Europeans do that? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to tell you. I should have told you yesterday, Jacques, come on up to the second floor and wait for me there, you know. And you'd probably be sitting downstairs <laughs> waiting no, for no, me. No, I, un I understood right away. <laughs> okay, okay. And I've been here before. I think the last time I was here, you were still uh, sizing with the, the special... Oh, with the rollers. well, that was all an experiment. That is, because you took a bunch of pictures and video. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. We tried, that was Mark 1 or Mark 2, and you were here. Who else was? Uh, yeah. uh, uh, your, your business partner. Well, me and Ali Amazon were trying yeah, to do yeah, this. So, yeah. so, so. That's right. That's right. It worked, but it just wasn't practical. Yeah, the, the rolls got so Gummy yeah. and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. That's a long, yeah, it's five years ago. Before Corona, of course. Yeah. Now that it's all over, the pandemic's over, are you coming back to Japan more often? Then? You yeah, said this research? But my plan is to do that. Yeah. But as in research, like hitting libraries and stuff? Or still, like this yeah. time was travel to show? This time was only travel, yeah. But are you going to get serious? Computer and research libraries and uh, application to go into this special yeah. collection? Yeah. Excuse me, Jack. Well, national, the National Library, um, I should go to, I think. The diet. The, yeah, I know. Although that's split up all over the place. Uh, the, a lot of their collection is in the Toyo Bunko, which is up at uh, Kon... Where is it? I forget what where it is in Tokyo. Not in Tokyo? It's in Tokyo, but okay. it's split in a separate building. Okay. A lot of their prints and books are in a separate location. So. And okay. also you'll need, you would need, I know, uh, you can't just walk in. Mm. You would have to arrange somebody, whatever, Chris or somebody back in Holland to write you a 
a letter of introduction yeah. and somebody with as many PhDs as possible and who's known, you know, um, you I, know, I have your own, yeah, okay, in <laughs> That'll do fine. That'll really, really help. So okay. come under uh, whatever list, and then Chris which or whoever is, else, which whatever. Is crazy, but, of <laughs> but with that kind of a letter and introduction, you're in. But yeah. without that, uh, you no guarantees. Yeah. You know? Okay. I could not get in there myself, but. Uh. No, I didn't. Uh, my other website, that was also a lot of fun. Uh, as you know, I bought from you these hmm. three uh, books. The uh, Ehon uh, by uh, Katsushika Hokusai, yeah. that was the about the continuous, continuous view along the Sumida River yeah. of, uh, in Edo. Mm. And uh, so I made it a project to go to all these places mm. that you see in those books mm. and uh, make pictures of them. What Jacques is talking about is this. And I the three volume set, he's given it in Japanese, but to put it in English so you understand what's going on, the Hokusai book was panoramic view of both sides of the Sumida River. Yeah. And this was in Hokusai's era, it was 1840s or whatever, I don't even know what date it was, 1830s, yeah, 1840s, I don't okay. remember. Yeah. It's a three volume book, and I, I helped Jacques find a copy. That was the Taisho reproduction show, Taisho yes. 5. Yes. People like you and me can't afford the, the real thing. The real thing. Yeah. And the book, the book we're talking about, is, uh, is this Not sort of picture. Here we are. Each page is a panoramic view. This one is the other side. And he, he does both sides from the river mouth all the way up to... And they, almost all the way they connect up as one long picture. Mm, but it really doesn't in real life because he's skipping and some of them are taken yeah, away yeah, from yeah, the river. He's, well, he's, yeah, he's fooling done. around with this. Exactly. It's creative, yeah. yeah. But this is the type of scene we see. And what Jacques has done is, some of, a lot of these places are real life places, so of course it's... And still exists. Yeah, yeah. So it's much easier than the Tokaido. In terms of Sensei Martian right now, he's walking the Tokaido oh, and yeah. he isn't going to find many places. Oh, there it is! There's Hiroshige's spot! But on this one, because there's the Ryogoku Bridge, there's that temple, there's this, we can find the exact spots. So what Jacques did, he has taken the book and he has, where are we? He's done this. He's got a website. Uh, the, the mods are already linking it, Joe. Yeah, it's already been linked. Yeah. Thank you, guys. He's made a website, and he's marked with numbers exactly where these places are, so I you can go and this, find them. This map uh, in uh, Adobe Illustrator with layers, you know. Oh, so uh, it's, it's, it's hot on the website, so you click through. Yeah, you can yep. click on all yep. these little dots. Numbers and, and dots, then you, yep. It connects you to the pages mm, of the mm, books. Mm, mm, mm. It was a lot of fun. It was really a lot of fun. To do. Exactly the kind of thing I would like to do, but I'm always like, yeah, maybe somebody else could do this. <laughs> no, this one, this one I no, I know, I know, I know. I'm not, I'm not taking credit for this. Yeah. And I'm sorry, I don't have the book here. If I'd have known, you know, yeah, my, my copy of the book is in, in Ome. It's on a shelf in Ome. I'm yeah. sorry. My copy of the book actually is, uh, it's an original. Really? Original. Ome date or gozaimasu. No, uh, no, 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 no. It's, it's not really an original. Jacques, it's an original. Okay. I showed it so on the show and teller a couple of years ago. Do you not do you not know about the project? Do you not know about the Boston Museum of Fine Arts? Oh yeah, that one I know. So so I have a copy uh, printed from the block. Because they were printed from those original blocks. Yes, blocks. yes, yes, yeah, yes, yeah. yes, yes. Okay. Long story short, the original book, okay. 1840, whatever, long yeah. gone. Bigelow, one of the, the uh, researchers and... and uh, his grandson is what? there. Is there uh, really? The, really? So, so anyway, the blocks were found and taken back to Boston Museum of Fine Arts, and they didn't know they had it for like 100 years or 80 years. They didn't know they had these. Some researcher opened some crates, what's this stuff, wood block, what's that, wait a minute, and they realized it was the blocks, the original blocks for this Hokusai book. This is 1986, 1987, somewhere around there. So they got sponsors, they got JAL and NHK, no, TBS TV or something, took the blocks back to Japan, printed a limited edition of 200 copies from them, and then took the blocks back to Boston. And there were two or three blocks missing. They had to, you know, recut and put some in. And Nakata-san, one of, one of Adachi's top printers at the time, he's long gone now, Nakata-san had the job of, of doing this. And there's a one-hour documentary on, it's on YouTube. YouTube, it's all over the place. Yeah, yeah. I forget what it's called. It starts with a stupid baseball yeah, scene. People I don't get what's going, going on. on. What, what's, yeah, what's yeah, this yeah. About? Do you, know, do you remember what it's called? Oh, here it is. Hoax I Return. So look at this. You guys are killing it today. <laughs> eggs, eggs, eggs. Who is this? <laughs> Chicken Meister. This is so cool. It's like, it's like I've got a personal assistant. Nurse, hand me the scalpel. I do this. Yeah. <laughs> it's fabulous. Thank you. 
the documentary is cool and Kubota-san is in there the scene where they put the blocks on the table yes. and Adachi-san is on the left hand side he's looking at this and on the right hand side the senior printers are there Murata-san and Nakata-san and at the back end of the table there's a young Kubota Kubota-san is there and he's geeking around and looking at this and he wants to do this so bad and he wasn't allowed to touch it <laughs> he was still too junior Anyway, I've got, to, I've, got to, I've got to copy that thing. It came up on auction one day and uh, people didn't really understand what it was. So and I grabbed also, it. Also, uh, on that website, of course, I visited all the, temp all the temples. On the way yeah, along there. And, the of course, I collected the, the Goshu Incho <laughs> You better explain it. That's Japanese. Lots of people don't, don't okay, understand. So it's, uh, shall I, I, I have, have you got it? With me. Sure, sure, I, sure, 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 of course, of course. Something you work down the street. You mean the Boston Museum of Fine Arts? I, I doubt the blocks are on display all the time. I have no idea. You we're talking about a stack of like 400 pieces of wood. They were in crates. It was a massive job to bring it back to Japan and reprint the book. So they certainly won't have them all, but they may have a few sample blocks on display. I have no idea. I'm fooling with the screen layout, just trying to make room so we could see this and see me and Jacques at the same time. But uh, I first had the camera set up over there so that Jacques and I would be standing side by side, but the backlight killed it. All we saw was two black silhouettes. That's why I moved the camera over here, but now we're, we're in the same line of sight, so can't be helped. So, uh, did you sleep better in the last two nights? On the last stream you said you had a bad night. Well, the tax thing, the just, tax. Uh, it's whatever, it's what it is, it's blown away, you know, just forget it, you know, I'm not. Uh... So anyway, this is a Go Shuin Cho, it literally means Honorable uh, Temple Stamp Book. It's also an Orion, by the way, ah. holding album. And it's, uh, it has... You're, watch, okay, you're a little bit out of sight, Jock, look. No, down, down, down. Or you are here, whichever. Okay, sorry. Is this better? And so each in each temple you can uh, get these red stamps with the uh, the name of the temple and the date of your visit in uh, calligraphy. But it's not a rubber stamp. The, the priest writes it as you're waiting to show. This is not a rubber stamp. But jump. Well, this, the the red ones are. Yeah. Okay. But the the. But the rest is. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Shodo. The other day we had someone in the shop who was you know, doing this everywhere they went and they asked us if we had some kind of stamp or whatever we could put in. Ah, yeah, yeah. Because all the train stations, I mean, I it's, not, it's not as elegant I as this. I also collect those so, as well, on sense yep. train stations. Yep. Every train station in the country has a little stand somewhere with a rubber stamp pad where the ink is yeah. running out and whatever. And you can put the stamp in your, in your, in your book, so not one, your passport. One but of the sentences I often... Uh, Put in Japanese as Ikino Stampuado Kodesuka. Ah, Soka, Soka, Soka. The funny thing was that, that couple that was here the other day, they asked us if we had a, a company stamp to put in their book, you know. Yeah. They, this is a little bit, Jacques, this is a religious thing that he's yeah, doing here. You, People on an old pilgrimage. Mix, you're not so allowed to mix. You wouldn't put your station stamps in with those no, things. If you had it in there yeah. and the priest opened the page, he's just like going to give no. it back to you because that's not what this is about. It's a religious, semi-religious uh, uh, offering here. So the two things are separate. What Jacques has here is the, is the temple pilgrimage kind of thing. And people have just a travel book. But this, this lady had them all, all whatever, jumbled together. And she asked, what have you guys got? And we, we don't actually have a, a mokohankan, you know, round stamp or whatever. We used to do print parties. People, 
So uh, we you, pulled the drawers. You, you, you give them uh, barren cookies. <laughs> day, <right>? <laughs> <laughs> One day. So <laughs> I remember we pulled the drawer open down there, and we've got like a rubber stamp. When you're doing an address, it's got your address, Mokohankan, Taitoku, Tokyo. So I said, that's kind of all I've got. And she looked at me and like, that's all you've got disappointed. And then her husband remembered something. Her husband, partner, whatever, I'm sorry, I don't know whatever. Her partner remembered something. He was a, he's a chat who might be watching today. He said, you know, Dave, you were showing a while ago on the stream, you had some seals, as in like stickers, seals. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, seal, a Mokohankan seal. And then I remembered, under the counter we do, we've got little barren seals that we use to put on packages as well. And it's a peel and stick, and it's, a, it's an actual photograph of a baron. Mm. It's like on our website, top left corner, it's sort of like our logo. So I pull this out and put on, he said, actually, that's not what I meant. No, it's the one on the border of your prints, maybe, the one you, you no? No, not I one. didn't get it. I said, well, okay, okay, okay you're going to have to tell me what's going on. And he said, it's not garbage. And I remembered Soka, so I ran upstairs, and we do have somebody sent us some seals. I don't know if you've ever seen this. Somebody made up some seals that say it's not, and instead of garbage, there's a picture of a garbage can. It's not garbage. So I ran upstairs, got one, and like, you really want this? In? They're, they're happy, happy, happy. So they've got the seal in their book. It's not garbage. I don't remember who sent those to us. I'm sorry. It's almost certainly somebody here from the chat. Gomi dewa arimasen. This is for Hokusai. Ah, Hokusai the, number the six. One, Hokusai number six. Yeah. So it's going to Kubota-san. The uh, first 200 are in hand. Rei-chan did a batch of 100. They're already posted out. She did another batch of 100. They're getting posted out from tomorrow. We, I sent the invoices yesterday. And the Kabuto-san now, he's doing the third and fourth batch together. So he'll be doing, there's 25 sheets of paper all together, cut with each one making eight prints. And we're going to do... He is the top gun yeah. until he won't be. He's yeah. any day now. Literally, and I mean any day now, he is going to retire. He's already retired from Adachi years mm -hmm, ago. Mm -hmm. Then he came to working for us, and he's already pulled the plug on that once. And I went and begged and just bended knee and cried and said, Kubota, my God, we can't <laughs> And he said, okay, we'll do a bit more. But how the next... Old, how old is he? Oh, I'm 72. He must be 75 or 6. Okay. So he's healthy. He's okay. But, you know, like, he doesn't want to be doing all of this all the time every day. He likes the money because we're paying really, really, really well. Mm -hmm. So he's, he's still, that's sort of keeping him a little bit in, in check mm -hmm. there, you know. Mm -hmm. But at one point, he's just going to say, I mean, maybe he'll get a little bit sick or something and can't do it. Or maybe he'll just say, Dave, no, look, this really is enough. Thank you for, you know, thank you for everything. But I just can't uh, do this anymore. And then I will be in major, major, major trouble. So what am I doing about it, you know? Nothing. No. There's one thing I, I bumped into in Ueno Park that I wanted to ask you something about. Jeez, look at this. Look at this mess. This is what you get working with other people. This is the flip over plastic. It's supposed to be folded neatly. The other, this is what frustrates me about working with other people. Nobody is doing things neatly and cleanly and carefully. Fold up a piece of plastic like this. If this, if this is Afghanistan. Afghanistan, are you watching? <laughs> you will never, ever, ever, ever be a good printer unless you get organized. Keep it neat, keep it clean, keep it folded. She's laughing at me because she doesn't care. She doesn't want to be a perfect printer. She wants to be an artistic printer, which means being artistic. This is not artistic, this is... <laughs> Get off my lawn.
you should see Kubota-san. Everything on his workbench is, it, the paper sits there to within a millimeter. When he's doing his rough work and getting it organized, the paper is organized to a millimeter. It's what they always say about the good chef's stool in the kitchen. It's, it's never dirty. It's always clean up. Kids these days. Uh, okay, too many conversations going on here. Okay, what's the? Uh, these are. This is. This is Wino Park to show. Wino yeah. Park. Well, show, show, let me okay. bring everybody into the conversation here. Jacques got a photograph. Okay. And, uh, is it? Is it right now? Is that the season now? Yeah. Well, well, uh, four weeks ago. Okay. Okay. And then these are Hasu. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. right next to it, of course, Hasu made many prints of Wino Park. Uh. I mean, the, the famous Hasui print of the... Of and, the and I've next, right next to the lotus, Hi. is this... Megane no... I don't know, is it's a monument or... And I thought, right away, are these the Megane, the glasses of Hasui, maybe? Oh, I don't it doesn't say anything about Hasui, I can't... It's Megane no... What's the final character here? I, can't, I couldn't read it. I can't read the final one either. No. Tokugawa Ie. Tokugawa... So that's the show. Something for Tokugawa time. Oh, it's blurred. I can't see it. Look at that. Totally blurred. Something Megane. This is Megane. Tokugawa. Tokugawa house. This mm -hmm. is Kara. Yeah. Kara Basho time. No Megane. I huh. don't know. Maybe somebody will know. This is perhaps something famous. It's a, it's a monument to some glasses of something and to I, do with the Tokugawa and I, era. And I thought of Hasui. Right I don't think it's any no, no connection no, no, with Hasui know, whatsoever. Know, but, uh, Maybe somebody might know about this. The, the, the photograph we just saw was the Lotus Pond Shinobazu Ike at Ueno Park. Right. The famous Hasui print with the similar mood with all the lotus uh, leaves or whatever. Yes, ladies. that's different. That's in, I know, where is that? That's Shiba, Shiba Koen, kana? down near uh, the to to not Sky Tree, down near the Tokyo Tower in Shiba. Okay, but no no he, connection anyway, whatsoever. He did a lot of prints of Wino. Sure, of course, of course, of course. Yeah. 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 Can I, excuse me, can I slide this over sure. there? What's the time? 8.52. Ooh, we are we, 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 we behind schedule. Doesn't matter. Somebody's got a monument to Tokugawa Ieyasu's glasses. Well, that's kind of what it says. It says Tokugawa family Megane. something, something. If I can't read, there's a blurred character in the middle that I can't read. So, so I guess it's known. Does it have a Wikipedia page? I don't know. I have no where. Where in the park was it, Jock? I've never seen this before. I know nothing oh, about right it. Right next to one of those uh, big lotus uh, fields. Quite, quite. So near it's the end. in the walkway around the pond. When you're walking around the pond, it's visible on the walkway there. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't see any water. I only saw the the lotus. Ah, okay, fields, okay, but, the, the, but they're floating on the pond. Okay, yeah. okay, okay, okay. Yeah, but right. did you go? Did you walk all the way around it? Did you go in the middle to Benten Shrine, the, the little island in the middle of the pond? Okay. I've seen so many things. All right, okay. For okay, weeks, okay. So. Monument to Tokugawa Ieyasu's glasses. I've never heard of this. Sorry. Never heard of it. I've only been here 40 years. Doesn't count enough. Well, uh, you, you, you did uh, tell uh, Ayano san, uh, Ayano -san that you knew, knew some nice uh, spots or places around Ueno Park. Because she moved, she lives there near near. Oh, so Park. she's good. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the the last dream we were talking about. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So so so. I put too much on. Sink in, sink in, sink in. Shh, shh, shh. I can't see it. It's shiny. I should maybe blot it off. Excuse me, cancer. Go back.
Gee, that monument must be online somewhere. If, if people Google Tokugawa glasses, we know it must come up somewhere, you know. When are you flying out, Jack? Tomorrow? Ah, tonight. Tonight, Nanda. I don't, I'm not looking forward to it. Is the flight too long, you mean? Or just you don't want to go yeah, home? Well, I just don't, don't want to go home, of course. <laughs> I don't want to go home. <laughs> You're retired, this, oh? When did you, you've been a year off now? Yeah, two, oh, two years. I two years. Know. Retired. What does it mean to retire means, and spend all your time doing it, what it you means, want to do? Yeah, wh exactly what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> Except oh, well, when you have to do it and when you don't have to do it, it's kind of different, this, oh? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Are we the same age? I don't know if any of you. You're younger than me. Yeah, you're, you're three, we're two years, two okay. years apart. So uh, you worked to, I see. So you worked to 70 then? No, seven, 76 and, and a half. Wait, I'm 72. Well, so oh, you're up. Okay, okay. So, 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 so. so Langstrand has a long explanation here. About, about the glasses? Yeah, about the glasses. He owned them uh, in the later years of his life, obviously. Hmm. When Birch, uh, and they've got the a monument. Of <laughs> Why would they have a monument? I mean, like, because, like what? Oh, because they were rare, maybe at the time. Let, let me continue. I don't know. I mean, even in Hokusai Manga, we see pictures of a guy with glasses hammering a woodblock. So the glasses were known. Mm -hmm. Ah, Tokugawa Ieyasu, back at the beginning. Yeah, that's early. This is this is 1690 or 1710 or whatever. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah by Hokusai's day, the middle of the 1800s, they might have been common. But for Tokugawa Ieyasu himself, there's no, you know, big exchange of foreigners back and forth yet. This is just about to happen. So, yeah. okay, okay, okay. I can buy that then. That's really early days so of the Tokugawa were, era. Yeah, of course, were, of course, yeah, of course. So, I see. Apparently. Yeah, that's right. We think about the Tokugawa era, all the stuff that happened during that era, but when Tokugawa Ieyasu was alive, none of that stuff had happened yet. I mean, he didn't even really know, well, of course he didn't know, that it was going to be, you know, 250 years of Tokugawa era, whatever. Yeah. Of course, of course, of course. Interesting monuments in Ueno Park that I must have Oh missed. yeah, it's like any, it's like the parks in London, you know, every corner you go there's a there's stone something. and a gravestone or something, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is uh, Sadako-san coming in today? No, no, she, oh, no. she was on Saturday and Sunday, oh, she's, she's on a weekend. shift, yeah, she's a weekend shift. And this weekend, was it, was it? Crazy. No, not at all. In fact, yesterday was really, really strange. Yesterday was deserted oh, for right. most of the day. All through the morning, we're like, okay, what's going on? What's, we got a lot of work done packing. There was a bit of a peak in the afternoon, and it got quiet. I don't know. Hmm? We just never know. It's still a busy season for us, but minute by minute, day by day. It's difficult to plan. We've planned three staff. You know, if it was a normal day, we'd have two staff in the shop, but we brought extra two. And then on Friday, we had four, and we needed it on Friday. Hmm. We just can't tell. Can't tell what's going on. You know. I had an interesting visitor yesterday. I think I know. I guess it's okay to mention names. I'm nothing surprised. There's a, a young man who wrote an email a couple of months back. He's a British person working in Berlin, and he'd seen our YouTube channel stuff like that. And he ended up getting a job that required him to be in Tokyo for this next few weeks. So he had written to me saying, "Hey, can I drop by you know, and chat? Whatever, like YouTube visitor." And we did. He came by yesterday and we chatted. And his job, it's really kind of interesting, actually. He's a professional conductor, as in uh, the symphony orchestra world. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. he's here to be the conductor for one of the ongoing productions of a, what is it, Tokyo Ballet Company. So he's conducting their, their Christmas special of, uh, which is it, Swan, not Swan Lake, Sleeping Beauty. So he's here to do the Sleeping Beauty. So yesterday before his matinee, he came over. <laughs> he came over around noon. We said, hello, hey, nice to finally meet you after the emails and stuff like that. We're chatting about this, chatting about that, chatting about a bit more, chatting about this and that. And partway along, he says, downbeat what? is in 35 minutes. So, like, the downbeat for the ballet is in 35 minutes from now. And, like, we have sort of talked a little bit 
too much. And, and he's like, away, he's in Moko Hong Kong, and the, it's in the Bunka Kai Khan in the middle of Wayno Park. The downbeat is in 35 minutes. <laughs> so, <laughs> Did he make I don't know. Make we got out of there, Zoom, on a taxi, subway, sorry, the Ginza line, the traffic is crowded. So the Ginza line, two stations, in and out, you can do that in maybe 15 minutes. So I went with him to the Ginza line station to make sure he knew where it was. And off he goes looking at his watch. Whatever, whatever. I'm sure he, you know, got his clothes on and <laughs> down we go. <laughs> so Did he, he didn't forget, forget his baton. Baton. <laughs> so he seems like a real nice guy. He's going to come back and we're going to have fun chatting, I think, you know. Right. If he didn't get fired yesterday, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> But I think if he comes again, we should make it after his show rather than before the show. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. so. <clears throat> I'm peripherally, when I was a student, of course, I was, uh, you know, I was going to be one of the greatest flute players in the world, you know, when I was 18, obviously, 19. So, <laughs> so I have a peripheral experience in that world. I was never a professional sitting in a professional orchestra. I was in youth orchestras, but I did have lots of contact with that world. And actually I did a whole bunch of conducting myself in a, when I was 18, 20, 22, before I got out of it. The company I worked for, the music company in Western Canada, they had a deal where in order to get the company's business giving instruments and renting instruments, we had lots of, if you if your school district agrees to use our company for your school supplies for the next year, we will give you this and this and this and this and this. And there was going to be a discount. It was going to be that. You get all your sheet music 10% off. Whatever. The company negotiation. And one of the things our company offered school districts was, we will send you three, four, five, six times during the year. We will send you master clinicians to help your teachers do this and do that and do this. And I was one of the company's master clinicians. What the heck is it? Okay, what is it? <laughs> you could laugh, but man, we did a good job. Hunting, we did a good job. Like, for example... It sounds like you operated children or something. No, I had lots of experience myself at conducting youth ensembles and stuff like this. So when it was my day to be a clinician for the Kamloops School District or whatever, they were having a mass band concert where all the schools, all the junior high schools would get together in one of the schools, a big gym. The parents would fill the bleachers and the, the five bands would mass together. And they would have been practicing the same music and stuff like this. So I come in as the guest conductor and clinician for this concert. And it's sort of a bit like a, a master class. We, they, 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 do, they play something first and I sit there and listen. Then I get up on the podium with my microphone and, and I do a little bit of a, a clinic. Okay, here's how we can make this a bit better and blah, 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 blah. And the parents are all listening to this and the kids are all listening. And the teachers who are our customers, who I cannot insult or do anything. So what I've got to do is simply talk for 15, 20 minutes, complimenting what's been going on and offering some stuff, what could be better. And then I take the baton and this is all prepared and we're going to play something. And first we warm up for a few minutes by playing a couple of chords. I tell them what to play. Trumpets play a B flat. Now watch me. And we, we do a, I do the, the conducting. Ready? Start. And we do slow and we raise the sound and we push the sound. We do just little games where all these kids can play together and fill the gym with sound. And okay, now we've warmed up. We go to the piece which we've pre-selected. And it's a dramatic piece, it has sloth parts in the middle, and it ends with the most fantastic, glorious crescendo, and dust starts falling from the gymnasium roof and stuff like this. And the people go absolutely nuts. And even though it's kids, Dave's standing there doing this, ready, boom, boom, even though it's amateur, it's such an incredible hit when this sound washes over you, and, and you can pull it and do it. And then you turn around and the, the teachers are there and you do the little five minute speech to the parents telling them how lucky they are to have this group of dedicated teachers and you all know about the six o'clock morning cars bringing your kids to practice and stuff like that. Glorious, glorious experience. And you were only 18 years old. I know, I was about, no, I, this isn't the company. I came back after Britain. So I was 21 when I joined the company and I was 36 when I left it. Okay. I left just to come to Japan. I left in 1986. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, was, I had lots and lots of experience by then. 
Well, great. So, so, so Tom here, he's, he's from, you know, he's doing this classical orchestra conducting. He knows what he's doing, a professional conductor. You mean this, Tom? Yeah, 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 okay. yeah. So, okay. so, so. But me too, I've, yeah. I've been there. I've been on podiums, as many podiums as he has over those years, you know, doing these things. So, so I get it. I get what it feels like to be a conductor, a person in charge of, at the moment, hundreds of people sitting watching you. And it was really, really, really great fun. And were you uh, dressed up or no 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 bare, business bare feet? No. <coughs> Jacques, I had a suit and a necktie. Ah, Absolutely, I I had a. I used to wear a tie. It was a suit. The day I quit, me and the owner, I, we've talked the story many many times. The day I finally resigned to leave the company, come to Japan, we got the scissors out. The last day, they chop chops off his necktie. We all have a big blah blah laugh about this. Somebody had a bottle of something or whatever. I used to be a, a st square, straight guy. That was my last moment of employment. In the Netherlands, we had a, a prince. How's our time? Oh my God. We had a prince who did the same thing. He threw away his ties in public du during a, a speech. That made him very popular. A, you're talking prince, a king, king prince type yeah, prince. Yeah, 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 that kind of prince. But what's what you mean? He was going to go off and be a hippie and bare feeder and not no, be a prince no, anymore? I what do you mean? He was resigning? Just, I don't know what you mean. He, wa he wanted to get rid of all the... The trappings? Yeah, the trappings. Okay, I am going to be a man of the people kind of a thing. Okay, okay, okay. Like okay. Yeah. Right, what's the schedule? It's 9.06. I'm still halfway through the flip side. Whatever. Let's see how this is going to go. Is this my fault, uh, Dave? No, no, no. It's just whatever. Uh, I was late getting started. The, 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 the liquid wasn't uh, liquid enough. It was still congealed when, when I started here. Yeah, so. I saw that. Tom, no, Tom Tensigi, too many Toms. No, the Tom I'm talking about, uh, I, whatever. I, don't, I, don't, I feel nervous always about using people's real names on these streams, but I think it's okay. The gentleman is a conductor from Berlin who is working here in Tokyo this week, a couple of weeks. <laughs> Yesterday was fun. <laughs> With a the liquid wasn't liquid enough. You know what I mean. It wasn't liquid yet. It was still congealed glue. I'm pulling my leg here. <laughs> I can see already today is going to be one of those days, you know. Yes. Mondays always are difficult because every staff member in the building is always coming at me on Mondays, always. You mean with, with questions? With issues and stuff, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're competent people doing their job well, but, you know, stuff builds up and Monday's the day when they, they come running at me. <clears throat> so what did you do with the little bottle of champagne? Did you smash it's, it in no, the it's just, No, it's <laughs> just sitting in my room back in its box. Okay. <laughs> did you have to bring that up? <laughs> <laughs> ah, <go laughs> it's actually getting worse, you know. It's actually getting even, worse. Even worse? Yes, maybe? yes. Okay. It's getting worse. It's only in abeyance for the moment. Uh, the last communication with the woman was on Thursday. She wanted this stuff done Friday. Uh, no, your son was here Friday, but she's off Friday. And I said something smart-ass to her. Must be nice having a four-day-a-week work, you know. Uh, you know, whatever. Well, you, you, whatever. No, it's all done. It's all nailed down. They are going to... They've already made their thing. We're going to mm -hmm. pay them four million yen. It's all decided. Yeah. She already said, no, 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 forget it. So at that point, I can get smart ass. I don't care. It's not going to hurt me anymore because it's already done. You know? So I made a smart ass remark. Must be nice to have four day work or whatever. And uh, so she's coming back. She'll be back this next Friday. Okay. Because Yamada-san, our accountant, is off. He's studying for exams to be, a, to be an accountant, uh, you know, a high level international accountant. So he's off Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So that's forced her to, uh, to push it back. So. Uh, so nothing's happening this week with the tax thing. Uh, Friday is the next, uh, next update.
almost at 26 grand US. Actually, it's it's in. Well, no, it all depends what you talk about. The the money we're being forced to pay is royalties that they think we should have been paid this year, last year, two years ago, and three years ago. The money at this end is all being calculated in yen. So the yen that we should pay, if we pay like whatever, 100,000 yen today, and 100,000 yen two years ago, and 100,000 yen three years ago, in US dollars it's all different. So the, the four million, in fact you can, you can do this one right now, we're, the final number is still not in, it's been climbing, it looks like it's going to settle around four million yen. The 4 million yen at today's exchange rate, which is 150, something like that. What's 4 times 50? That's, no, 150 yen. So 4 million divided by 150 gives me 25, 25,000. So it's around $25,000 US dollars at today's exchange rate. But most of this money was two years ago, three years ago. So if we used, for example, two years ago's exchange rate, which was 130 or something, Take four million divided by one thirty. That's now thirty-five thousand dollars. So it's it's irrelevant to me. But when I'm telling you about the penalty, you know, it means different things to different people. So it's going to cost us just north of four million yen. Twenty-five grand, thirty-five grand. They're both true. It just depends how you how you analyze it. You know, because these were royalties that she and she's done back calculations. She's done something bizarre. We do the bookkeeping in yen. We pay the royalty, the designers, in yen, and we do our bookkeeping in yen. She now has changed those numbers to dollars because those people are in America, picking up exchange rates, different exchange rate for each day that we've made these. And she wants us now to declare these things to her in dollars, which she will now convert back to yen at some exchange rate they're using, and that's what we have to pay. It's an extremely bizarre, 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 bizarre situation. So how much are we going to have to pay? I still don't even know. It's around 4 million yen. It's not going to kill us. We've got it. We don't need to make any pleas. We need to go fund. Help me. We need Patreon. No, no. We've got the money in the bank. We're okay. It's not going to kill us. But you had other oh my God. Well, I, I don't at the moment because we're struggling on what to do. But it just takes a massive hit on our savings. Yeah, years of work. It's way more than my salary. Way, way more. It's nearly two years of my salary. Mm -hmm. Jesus. Anyway, don't want to talk about it. I was in a good mood, Jacques, until you. Mm, sorry. <laughs> Are there still uh, uh, rabbit gift prints available for? Uh, yeah, we're printing more all the time. Absolutely, absolutely. So. I still want to, you know, to, to that Australian family. Oh yes, yes. I was, I was curious about that because you usually, you uh, know, yeah, yeah, talk about I that quite earlier. Yeah. This okay. Year, this year, I wasn't so. sure if maybe something had happened, but. Uh, yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. no. Okay. We're holding okay on the where we, the subscription prints have been our main. You know, when I'm organizing work with our printers, lots of prints are getting low in the shop. But what I do is, for me, the priority is keeping our subscription prints in stock. Absolutely. Somebody's subscribing. If we're missing a print, we're in big trouble. So for me, the assignment of printer's work, like what's happening today, is prioritized to subscription prints. Then after that, after they're all booked and coming up, my next priority is the prints that are, you know, you, where, where we're running out of inventory. Prints in the shop and in the online catalog. Mm -hmm. That's the next priority. Then next after that is Ukiwe Heroes. Uh, Jed has not been ordering too many heroes from us recently, so it's been uh, the pressure from him is low. But Ukiwe Heroes have been selling like crazy in the shop. And at the moment, we're out of the rickshaw cart prints, totally. In the middle of the autumn season, we're out of them. And actually, that's not my fault. I had calculated perfectly, but we had two packages stolen in America, you know, the porch pirate thing. We had two packages of prints stolen in America. It was that late September or October, and most of them were rickshaw cut prints. So that really blew a hole in my inventory calculations. And those prints are gone. They're gone forever. You know. By some people of the post posting company? No, no, it's, it's a criminal. They, they, in fact, they were caught by the, by the police. They know who it is and what happened, but the, the prints never came back. Mm. It was a person that broke into, I guess it was a DHL truck and stole a key. And DHL mm. didn't realize the key was gone. And this person, dumb criminal, but smart enough to realize, they go to a DHL Dropbox, steal a few packages, not the whole thing, and don't leave a trace behind. 
and it, it took weeks before the theft was known because DHL just opened their Dropbox in the morning, put them into the system, and the customers who were involved didn't know something was missing until it didn't arrive, and et cetera, et cetera. Then the, theft, the thief held onto this key, then a couple of weeks later, during the night, went back to the same box, opened it, took a few packages again. So instead of blowing it up all in one theft, opening the box, destroying it, taking everything and running away, and DHL would then change the locks, they didn't do it all in one. They dribble, very, dribble, dribble. A little bit sneaky, so. Yeah. So those prints were gone. And that, I said, that blew a massive hole in my inventory calculations. You know, 50 prints get stolen, I can't just replace them just like that. Yeah. And what's worse, too, is that we had paid Jed the signing fee for that. <coughs> it was all booked, and that's part of my tax penalty now. Even though the prints were stolen, still they still want me to pay 20% the withholding fee on the money that would have been paid to Jed if the prints had not been stolen. This is what they're doing to By me. By the you mean this nice lady? Yes, 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 mm. the Japanese tax people. Yeah, Tom, I, I've been studying Japanese for four years uh, now. Um, I even passed uh, the GLPT and 5 test uh, last July. So, yeah, I do speak some and that's what, what, you know, one of the enjoyments for me to come to Japan to see how I improved and uh, to be able to read more and more, uh, especially Kana is easy, of course, but uh, Kanji, that's, that's, the, that's the problem. But, uh, yeah, I, I, I w it's, it's the most difficult language in the world, they say. What? Yeah. That's what I hear from everybody. I think that viewpoint is from a couple of hundred years ago. It was like it was the devil's language. But no, in real still, life, no, no, no. Well, 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 okay, anybody who well, says what, that, what, Chinese. No, ten Chinese? times, ten times, ten times worse. Ten times worse. Well, there, <coughs> there's no gra hardly any grammar in, chi in Chinese, I understand. It just sounds stuck together. Well, I mean, I don't speak Chinese and I haven't studied Chinese, so I can't tell you from personal experience which is more difficult. But Japanese really isn't so bad. The, the sound of it is easy for us. Any, anybody with European ears, like it's an Italian sound. It's consonant, vowel, consonant, vowel, consonant, vowel, repeated. So to speak the words for us comes out with no problem. You mean Japanese? Japanese, yeah, yeah, Japanese, that, Japanese. That, that's easy. So, and the grammar, yeah. the fact that the verb is stuck at the end, it's not really such a big deal. And then the fact that there's no intonation. You can speak yeah. Japanese. If you, if you yeah, speak you see, Japanese like this as a robot, this people understand you better than if you speak with inflection yeah. and stuff if like this. So, whereas Chinese, so I am told, is full of massive amounts of sing-song and intonation, which yeah. is dramatically important to the words. The same syllables, whatever, pronounced in a different intonation means something completely different. But, so, and then the, one more, the kanji yeah. characters, we've limited the kanji characters to 1,860, yeah. I think is the latest the count. Chinese have a lot more, a lot more, a lot more. Not to mention they've got the two main, they've got one language at the north side and another language at the south yeah. side. Which one are you going to speak, you know? So, but, but, whatever. But, okay, how about colloquial Japanese versus neutral Japanese versus keigo? Uh, what about... Mm -hmm. Okay, just pa pause there. That doesn't happen in Dutch? No. Really? You're going to well, speak to the king the same way you speak well, to me? It's, it's just one difference. It's uh, the, you, the you thing that's split into you for uh, friends mm -hmm. and you for, uh, for the king, mm -hmm. <laughs> let's say. Okay. That's all, there's only two, uh, that's very easy. Mm. And then in Japanese you have a counter for everybody. Yes, different that's thing. trouble, yes, yes. I'm not saying that, Japanese is all easy, and there, there are quirks and quarks in there, of course. Definitely. As far as the keigo goes, when's the last time you needed to talk to the emperor, Jacques? Do you need to learn how to speak like this? 
we are, my, well, my, my point is, in daily life, we speak to normal people, and if we just use a typical neutral Japanese, everybody's happy. The emperor yeah, would be not true. so happy, but that's not going to happen. The truck driver is thinking, who the hell is this guy talking to me like that? But I don't talk to many truck drivers either. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Uh, <laughs> but the counters, you're right. The counters are a bitch. So yes, absolutely. Crazy. Absolutely. So so you get them wrong, and you get them wrong, and people just smile. Well, or you, or you use the hitotsu, he, he Yeah, of course, uh, which will be understood. So yeah. one thing, two things, three yeah. things. Please. So this idea that it's the devil's language, if you were trying to get absolute mastery of it, yeah, whatever. But in normal Look, life, no. Anyway, it's fun. It's difficult of, or not, I find it fun to learn. But as long as you're not stuck in an exam situation, you know, where people are testing you and all this yeah. kind of stuff, you know, yeah. of course. And this coming to me, J J Japanese is really easy. Like that explains why I'm so good at it. <laughs> Not <laughs> so. No, I know you, you often said that. But I still wouldn't dare to to uh, do a telephone conversation in Japanese. Mm. Are you like? Are you doing the tests, getting tested on a different level, Japanese level two or level three or something? Are you going yeah. through that process? Okay. Well, well, I just. Like I just said, in July I did the uh, N5, uh, uh, that's the easiest one. Okay. Yeah. And that you're doing that in where? In a, in a Japanese language school in Holland or where? Or, or online or something? Yeah, no, in Leiden there is, uh, I have a teacher, a Japanese okay. teacher. Okay. Yeah. And, and they can do like certifications? You take the tests no, and no, stuff? No, 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 it's the official uh, Japan, Japanese, Japanese language profi proficiency, proficiency test, test yeah. issued by the Japanese government. Mm -hmm. That, that kind of but test. your teacher does this with you? Do you sit down together? I mean, no, 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 no. So how do you just take the test? I go to a, a certain place where everybody okay. gets the So same. they're doing this in, in Holland? Yeah, in Leiden you can do it. Okay. In Paris you can do it. In okay. uh, somewhere, I think in Dortmund okay. you can okay. do it. So the Japanese government is, is organizing this? Yeah, or, yeah. 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 yeah, it's all uh, organized from Japan. There's my 25 sheets. We're done. It's now 9.21. It's going to take 10 minutes to move the cameras. What to do, what to do, uh, what you, to you do. Now you've got to, got to hang them. Yes, the next step is hanging, but it's going to take me 10 minutes to move the cameras. Chaos, shut the stream down, open it up again just to do nothing here. So what we might do, I have a couple of packages from Show and Tell that have been on standby. So because what, you already did some Show that was just I, I knew that wasn't going to be something that. interesting, so yeah. I just used that to kill uh, time for a few minutes. Okay. But I have two Show and Tell packages. So let's do that. Instead of breaking the stream down, doing all that stuff, let me put this aside. It's not winter yet. Excuse me, Jacques. If I put this over here, under the plastic, it will happily sit there for 10 minutes. Let me go and get the show-and-tell package. Okay. You can help me open it. We'll look at something inside. Okay. Is that okay? Is that okay yes. for everybody instead of the crazy hanging up stuff? Uh, congratulations, uh, coffee drinker. What a, what a great name, Coffee Drinker. Actually, to speak of show and tell and opening packages, I have one that's not opened yet, but I have one that I had to open. You know the way yeah, Yahoo auctions I mean, work. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. have to open them because if I don't Although check it and sign it, the guy paid. doesn't get paid. Yes. <clears throat> so whatever, whatever we get time for. This first one, there's a set of prints here that I'm puzzled about. And it, it's show, and I, I have no idea what is going on here. They're in two groups here. They're clearly, absolutely clearly Meiji era prints. And they're not all that dissimilar to the prints that we were talking about earlier today. They are from the same era, 1895, 1900, 1905, somewhere around there. Mm -hmm. We can tell from the paper and from the carving and from the look and the feel and the colors that were used. But what is going on? 
What's your guess here, Jacques, and people on the stream here? What's your guess? Why on earth would they do Diagonally. diagonal prints? Yeah. What's the purpose of doing this? It seems like we have a seasonal breakdown here. We have prints of this is a summer, it's a Natsumatsuri, this is the you know, Daimonji, mm -hmm. this is Kyoto. Mm -hmm. And we have scenes from, from during the year. This, are these cosmos flowers or are these peonies? I don't know. I'm not quite sure what flowers they are. No, it can't be cosmos. That would be fall. These people have summer kimonos. So I don't know. Specific flower from some specific season. What do we have here? Is this spring maybe? I'm not quite sure. Sorry, Jackie, can, if you can. Can you see from where you are? I'm trying yeah, to put yeah, it so yeah. these guys no, can fine. see it. I'm fine. Now these wouldn't have been made just like this, as one sheet of paper. It looks like, if we sort of randomly put a couple of pieces mm -hmm. together, my guess is they would have been made like this, as two pieces together. And mm -hmm. some of them, I've been trying to match them up, some of them, this do, one here, you them? can see whoever cut it didn't oh, quite yeah. cut it exactly. And we can see a little bit of the colors and patterns that would have been from the Another next one, one. Yeah. but I can't find one that matches. Mm -hmm. In all of the little selection we have here, nothing actually matches those little lines that are peaking there. So they could have been made in longer groups, but at the very least, they were made yeah. in because, groups of because two. Because it could be both sides, right? The bottom and the top side. Could you mean it could have another one? Down, down I don't think it would have been that long. That would be clumsy and difficult okay. to print. Mm -hmm. my, my guess, two like this would be a normal size print, something right. sensible to carve and print. And mm -hmm. definitely you can see there's little dots here mm -hmm. that are the colors and lines from the neighboring print. But mm -hmm. I don't have a match. Is there any comments and guesses and things in the chat here? Catch up with that a little bit there, Jacques, please. Why on earth would they have made these in a diagonal format? Wrapping paper or origami? Well, I think this is not wrapping paper. Yeah, these are too high quality. For, they're too high quality to be disposable. This is not your, your average cheap wrapping paper, one or two colors. These are a little bit more upscale than that. So, uh, M8 Color Work is asking, did you ever meet the Emperor, Dave? You, d you did once. I, we didn't chat. I, I was invited no, to the. Were invited, I was invited to the the uh, spring poetry uh, event, the and Utagai then, Hajime. And you were wearing a suit. Yes, I wore my I wore a morning I wore a morning, morning coat and a tie, which I rented. I rented a suit nice. and a tie, and I bought shoes, which are still in the cupboard. But did I meet him? Hello, how are you doing? No, were we presented in the room? Yes, he came. We went in first, sat down. He came in and sat down, we did the poetry thing, he left, we left. So no, I haven't met him face to face, but yeah, I've been in the palace. Yeah. Anyway. What do you think, sir? Yeah. It's, yeah. It's very similar, it's clearly seasonal. I, I don't have 12. The imagery definitely reminds me of these uh, Orion books at the same period, mm. but I don't know why they... Mm. If I was going to guess, I'd go a bit earlier. To me, this is a little bit more like ukiyo-e mm -hmm. than the pictures we see okay. in those books we're talking about. But I'm just, I'm honten, I'm just guessing. Right. There's more of an ukiyo-e feel in the way that the carving is done. And the ladies here, they look, you know, this could be from a Hiroshige print almost. These came in a couple of weeks ago uh, from auction. And Watanabe-san wants them for the shop, but I'm like... No, nope. no. Nope. Oh, you want to keep them? Of course I want to keep them. Right. But also, I've already got some. I've seen things like this before. And I think on a show and tell four, five, six, seven years ago, we would have seen something like this. I would have opened a package and suddenly seen a few of prints like this. Because I've seen these before, but I can't find them. That's why this is waiting here. I'm saying, what number I want to keep these. She said, we've seen them before. Some of these are doubles. So she wants to take them for the shop. But I can't find my set. I have too ah. many. I've got some of these somewhere, but I can't. But I can't find them. Are we getting comments? Are we getting guessing? Diagonal wallpaper. I remember having diagonal prints. Yeah, Tom Sixty, give me a date and a time, please. We have. I do have some of these, but I cannot find them. 
we are way, way, way behind here in organizing and keeping track of the collection. Just so far behind. And I know this, but at the moment we're in sort of accumulation mode. Just buy them while they're available, while they're cheap, while we have some resources. Worry about the curation later. Yeah. And maybe it won't even be me during, doing the curation. It's my job at the moment to find the stuff, to grab it, to get a hold of this and put it together in a safe place. And other staff later can worry about, you know, what it is and sorting it out. It's my job at the moment to get as much of this interesting stuff together as possible. These are all prints and items that are being ignored by real collectors. Real collectors won't look at this. The institutions, the, the British museums of the world, they never look at stuff like this. They don't care because it's not the big brand names. It's not the Hiroshige Hokusai. So there's a massive amount of beautiful, gorgeous, interestingly made, superhumanly, beautifully, technically crafted work that is being completely overlooked by most of the the Japanese print world. So Dave here, we're just trying as well as we can to get as much of it captured and organized. And then hopefully as we, time goes by, we can document it and learn more about it. <coughs> beautiful, beautiful prints. Any one of these is just full of of taste, you know, I, I said here, the gradations, there's a gradation on the back roofs, a gradation on the front roof, another one here. The green is toned. You're looking at not one level of green here, but there's at least two, key, two green blocks with another one printed twice. The level of care and detail and the carving, the level of taste in the carving. There's a classic, what's a double dot pattern here. We see this again all through the Meiji era. Can I don't know if I can hold it still enough to do this. If you look at this somewhere near my thumb here, there's the little dot dots. Where's my thumb? Just a minute. Sorry. Here we are. There's all these little double dot patterns, like between my fingers here. I can't hold it strong. It's still there. You see there, dot dot. There's the scale with my fingers. So it's not just a single dot. It's the, he's taking the brush and going tut 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 to make this double dot pattern. And the carver has carved each one of those dots with a beautiful, beautiful taste and feeling. And somebody else would, who cares? It's the background dot pattern. Nobody cares. It's just dots to make it look like tea leaves. But every single dot is carved carefully and beautifully. It was just the, it was the ground rules. It was like the, the pronunciation. You pronounce words a certain way, that's fine. You carve dots in a certain way. And for those of us looking at this now, we're just, uh, people like me and Taran-san, we're just like, oh my God, you know, oh my God. Beautiful, beautiful stuff. Cost us next to nothing because nobody's interested mm -hmm. in this. But I can't just let this go by. We've got to try and catch this, hold it, photograph it when we have time, put it on the, the website. Do you spend uh, every evening like yes. an hour on No, on last Yahoo night. No, no, last night was Sunday. I started up after dinner. I came back about 8 o'clock. I pulled up Yahoo. I bookmarked maybe 30 different auctions mm -hmm. and I didn't get to bed till 11.30. So this is my, that's my third shift. I do a, yeah, yeah, a yeah. morning shift that's in Mokohanka and I do an afternoon shift and my evening shift. Uh, is, yeah, and I won four items. And we're really being careful now because we're trying to, I back off items where I can see somebody is artificially pushing the price up. Yeah. That's it. I cancel the window. Out I go. Yeah. And it's endemic still. It's absolutely mm -hmm. endemic. It's sometimes hard to tell when some, whether it's a real person bidding me up. So you quickly use the copy paste. You get out of there. You look at that auction, that, that uh, person's other auctions. And if you see the same pattern, somebody, the same name pushing you up and up and up and up, you know what's going on. So out you go. So I'm trying to be more, uh, more uh, proactive about that. Anyway, I think, Jacques-san, I think we should sign off here. Let me get back to the chat here for a second, please, just a sec. I think we're there. You know what's going to happen. I'm going to have to go to the next room and hang up this paper and do it. But today, really, there's no chance to do this on the stream. So thanks very much. So we'll leave it there. Jacques-san, thanks for coming by and saying hello. I'm sorry there was no thank, way to show people more about your, your websites and oh, stuff. If I'd have had the book here, it might have helped a little they, bit more. They can go to my website anyway, so. yeah, thank you. And you're flying off tonight? Yeah. When are we going to see you again? Uh, Next year? Two years? You don't know. Next year. Next year. You said you retire. You have complete freedom. You're rich. <laughs> no, I'm not rich. <laughs>
Okay, guys, signing off. We're out of here. Thanks very much. I'll be back as normal on Thursday, and you know what I'll be doing. It's going to be on that piece of boxwood down at my carving bench, hacking away. Oh, I should have brought upstairs. I've got a lot of work done. It's moved along. I've got about, I've got about, I've got about that much, that much done. Coming along very well. See you later. Good. There's no outside camera to bring up. We're just going to count it down. Three, two, one. Goodbye for now.